Many thanks for staying with us and welcome to another edition of Channel's Meme. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, as residents of Kogi, Bayelsa, and Imo states get set to go to the polls to elect those who will steer their ships for the next four years, all eyes are on the electoral umpire, INEC, the electorates themselves, as well as security agencies, as the off cycle elections hold on 11th of November. Now, civil society organizations and foreign electoral observers have all written and released reports on the conduct of general elections conducted earlier this year. Now, will INEC security agencies and the electorates take cue based on the released reports? This and other questions will be our focus on the show today. And joining us uh, to answer some of these questions is Hamza Lawal. He is the Chief Executive Officer of Connected Development. He joins us right here in our Abuja studio. It's a pleasure to welcome you and have you on the show always, Hamza. Thank you, Victor, for having me. Absolutely. We also have joining us from our Lagos studios, Emeka Eze. He's a political commentator and a businessman. Emeka, it's a pleasure to have you as well on the show. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, Hamza kicks out this conversation for us. Uh, many reports released, you know, so many recommendations made, uh, you know, from the past uh, elections. How do you uh, uh, reckon this coming elections will go? I'm optimistic. I know that um, some people have raised concern, but for me, I'm optimistic because it's an off cycle election. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, just before we came into the studio, the Nigerian army has already sent boots on the ground and we saw, you know, electorates and citizens were really excited and give, this gives hope and what this also means, it, it gives confidence and hopefully we'll have a lot of uh, voters turn out to cast their ballots. I'm optimistic also because I know that the security agencies can mobilize, it's just three states. And I know INEC would also live up to expectations. My colleague uh, was at INEC earlier today just to interface with them on the preparedness and readiness of INEC at the headquarters. Uh, later this week, I'll be on, on the ground, I'll be on the field, I'll visit a few, uh, a few polling, a few local governments, and then I'll end up with talking to the REC, understanding, you know, what are the preparedness. I'll, I'll hopefully, I'll also meet with the Commissioner of Police in Kogi State. And, some other security agencies uh, before I go to the field also in getting the vote out because I want to also interact with the electorates who have their permanent voters card and reassure them that, you know, as independent observers who are on the ground, I'm going to deploy to all the local government in these three states and set up a situation room that will become a hub in Lokoja that is collecting a real-time situation report from Bielsa, Imo, and Aninkogi State. Absolutely. Uh Again, I have to say I would share in your optimism, but uh, let me quickly uh, get to our Lagos studio where Emeka is uh, standing by. Emeka, I mean, Hamzat is optimistic things would go well, uh, but, I mean, optimism is uh, what we have to hold on to now, but uh, reality now, looking at, uh, you know, these states, they are pretty much, you know, uh, you know, a hotbed, so to speak now, especially Kogi and even Imo. Uh, but, but what are your expectations and, you know, what would you want to see differently this time around from what, uh, you know, we saw in, in February? Well, it's, um, it's, it's good to be optimistic, but uh, forgive me, I'm a realist. And my concerns at the moment, uh, you know, tilt more towards the area of security. I'm from Imo State and Imo State is having its own, its own you know, off-cycle um, governorship elections. And it's, it's a thing of concern, you know. Um, Olu zone or Kibu zone, uh, security situation, you would agree with me, has not been uh, the, you know, good in, you know, in, for some time now. And that alone is, is one of the things I believe will disenfranchise a whole lot of people, you know, from taking part in this election. But something really strikes me, and that's the number of um, registered voters that have their, you know, voters card, that have collected their voters card and ready to vote. Uh, in, in all three states, I understand that more than 90% of registered voters have collected their PVCs. But it's one thing to have these PVCs, is another thing for an enabling environment to be created for these elections, you know, to be, uh, you know, to be carried out. But then, if, if I, if I will take the words of the National Security Advisor, who in his words says uh, the security agencies are ready and everyone is, um, and that they are prepared. It's actually the first election that will be carried out under the watch of the President. Uh, His Excellency the President, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, and it's an, it will be an opportunity for him to really prove to us that he is a true Democrat. You know, so uh, for me, I, I wish I could be as optimistic as you and my, you know, my co-speaker, but then I'll just keep, I'll just keep, my, keep my fingers crossed and continue to watch 
uh, in, 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 in Biosta, I do not expect problems, but I, I, I'm very concerned about what will happen in Imo State and in Kogi State because the tensions seem to be rising. But I want to believe, I want to assure myself, uh, you know, that you know, security agencies are on top of the game. But when you talk about the security agencies, really the army and the all other security apparatus coming in, uh, whose interest do they represent? Is it for the whole, the good of all, you know, the electorate, or are they uh, there to protect the interest of some persons? That's not for me to say. These are some of the concerns, you know, that I have within me. But then, uh, we'll just stay positive and expect the best. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of, uh, you know, uh, whose interest they represent, I want to believe that they represent the interest of the electorates, the taxpayers who uh, pay them on a monthly basis and, you know, take care of their, of their, of their upkeep and, and all of that. I mean, just uh, yesterday, the IGP announced the redeployment, you know, of uh, uh, commissioners. So I think uh, that also is, is a step in the right direction because uh, if there is any form of familiarity, the new person coming, you know, perhaps would, would take, would take uh, uh, you know, precedence and, you know, do his job. Uh, but let me also take you up on, on, you know, things that you'd want to see. I mean, uh, so you've spoken about security, which is the major concern for you. But in terms of INEC, uh, you know, uh, maybe distributing their materials, uh, even the contentious IRF now, you know, uh, what would you be wanting to see in that respect? Well, um, during the last general elections, uh, a lot was said about the IRF, the Beavers, and all. But you would agree with me that the court sees it differently. Uh, what, what it looks like now is that some of those things aren't as important as they were made to look. Now, what I want is, um, I just want to believe that INEC has invested a lot in voter education. It's important to let the people know which will count, okay? And then train, training of ad hoc staffs is very important because we don't want people coming up, pulling units to, you know, say things that sound very funny. You know, it looks as if they are disconnected from, you know, their superiors, uh, giving excuses and, uh, you know, the rest, especially with areas, issues that border around upload of results, issues that border around registration of voters and the likes. So some of these things, it's, uh, you would agree with me that international and local observers, you know, a lot of them, you know, agreed or, you know, made it clear that um, uh, INEC, INEC and the elections did not meet or fully meet the expectations of Nigerians. So it's an opportunity for them to redeem their image, an opportunity for them to right all the wrongs that happened during the last general elections. I would suggest that things be done normally and security agencies play a very unbiased role, allow for people. Uh, another area is with... Um, Intimidation of uh, registered uh, uh, voters uh, uh, by I political mean, talks you know, uh, that should be avoided now, uh, somehow. IRF, okay, I, mean, uh, I just want to believe uh, that the best will come uh, from this bullet. elections, and it will be reassuring uh, you know, to Nigerians. It, let me use that word. You know, all of the 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 problems we usually encounter with our elections and our voting and all of that, but. One way or the other, I mean, you deployed during the elections and you're deploying this time around again. Uh, what would you be looking out for? Uh, first, we'll be looking at how security personnel conduct themselves, how INEC officials on the ground also conduct themselves. So these are the, uh, both the returning officer and all polling unit officers. Mm -hmm. We're also looking at how coalition are being uh, tabulated in the coalition center, the local government, before the results have been transmitted to INEC's uh, college, uh, result center where this, uh, the results will be announced. You know, for us, we look at the processes mm -hmm. under the guideline of INEC and also under the 2022 uh, Electoral yeah, Act. Act. So we'll, we'll be looking at specifically what the act entails. But, you know, we need to also be fair to Nigeria as a country because we've made progress. Because uh, if we want to look back history, so we want to look at 2011 elections. 2007 elections, for instance, where results were even written before elections took place. Uh, today, with the introduction of beavers, what we're doing with beavers is to eliminate multiple voters, you know, where it's only the numbers of accredited voters that we can also authenticate with the results that will be announced. Yes, we know IRF failed during the presidential elections, but we also saw that uh, INEC have put in place mechanism to avert this kind of failure. So uh, we should expect that these results will be uploaded after elections and results are being counted in various polling units. Uh, we hope also that there will not be any technology or internet downtime, mm. you know, so all these other places will have network penetration so that these results could be accessed via IREF. So for us, we'll be looking at, you know, 
various processes, but keenly focus on security, INEC, and political parties. Because most time we talk about elections and we, we forget political party. Political parties are one of the you know, critical stakeholders. So have they, conducted, have they conducted themselves before now? Yeah. Have they also increased voter awareness? Because it's not only left for INEC to raise awareness on voter. You that you're running for office or your political party, you're supposed to also raise awareness to get electorate informed yeah. on what to, how to tom print on the ballot uh, paper and what and not, logo. And not, and not to... In between. You know, yeah, yeah. Yes, so we'll be looking at how they conduct themselves. Because, you know, on the field, we'll also see uh, a political party agents. So how they're conducting themselves if they're trying to interfere with the process. Also, we'll be looking at voter inducement. So that's vote buying and vote selling. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I know and I hope that the anti-corruption agency also deploy and are able to respond when we send our report because our report is looking at real-time situations. So what's happening in real time and then escalate it to various government MDAs and even INEC. Absolutely. Uh, so, so uh, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, would really want to see is you know, voter participation, yeah. you know, the, 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 the willingness, you know, voters to come out, like we like uh, Emeka said, about 90%, you know, have collected their PVCs. But what would bring them out? What would be the main, uh, how would I put it now, uh, uh, juice that would draw them out? Because we always have the situation where we have high numbers in terms of collection. Mm -hmm. I think maybe we use it mostly for ID cards. But when it comes to the time to come out and vote, there is always a disconnect. What is the what could be the, the main cause for the cause of this? Uh, when government can guarantee protection of life and property, then people would have the confidence to come out. Another, you know, another big elephant in the room, which we try to shy away from, is fake news, and we've seen a lot of propaganda already springing up. So, if we can tackle fake news, misinformation, and disinformation, guarantee safety of life and property. I'm confident a lot of people will come out and vote. And if you look at the level of awareness, the level of engagement, the level of conversation, both online and offline, because for us, election observation have already started. Because we do pre-election, during election, and even post-election uh, you know, observation. Because most time when there's crisis, it's usually when the results are trickling down and when the winner have been announced. You know, that's when some hoodlums will try to take laws into their hands. So we're already observing all of this process. And, and so far, that's why I'm optimistic, because I have boots on the ground, I have eyes and ears on the ground. Mm -hmm. And we've seen how uh, security apparatus are moving, machineries and moving personnel and resources around, also putting in place more resources where they, they're flashpoints, like we call them. So I'm really optimistic that you know, they would uh, be up to the task. And the IG has built confidence, redeploying a commission of police just few days to election really show confidence. And because civil society, some civil society, some political actors had raised alarm yeah. because, because of what happened, you know, in previous weeks. So again, we're seeing that, yes, security agencies are not interfering with the electoral process. And, and hopefully the outcome of this election would strengthen INEC, strengthen the electoral process, and also give us uh, an insight on what are the gaps before we approach the 10 National Assembly on electoral reforms. Absolutely. Let me just hold you there for a bit. We need to take a quick break. And of course, when we come back, I'll take you up on our growth from 2007. Uh, you made mention of the technological parts, but there are some other parts that we'll take a look at when we return in a moment. Please stay with us. Many thanks for staying with us. We still have with us Hamlet Lawal right here in our Abuja studio looking at um, the upcoming elections in Bayalsa, Imo, and Kogi. Hamlet, just before we went on break, you know, I was uh, about to, you know, take you up on the fact that you made mention of how we've grown, you know, in our electoral processes from 2007, uh, you know, till now. Uh, but one thing that has been a recurring decimal is electoral violence, mm. insecurity, like you said. The only reason why people don't come out to vote is because their lives, you know, probably would be at stake if they come out. So there is the need to perhaps maybe increase the presence of security during elections. I mean, thankfully, this are off-cycle elections, so the security agencies might not be so stretched as not to be able to deploy two, three, four, or five at every polling unit, but what would you recommend? You know, to be fair to security agencies, uh, Victor, during the 2023 general election, for every polling unit, we saw at least three personnel that are on arm. So immigration, on yes, on arm. Immigration, custom, yeah. police, civil defense. But those are perpetrating arm. violence. Now, ideally, and from the election architecture, you're supposed to have perimeter security. So the armed patrol security, mostly 
very armed military, police, or civil defense personnel. So, so most time, you know, these uh, uh, hoodlums would regroup, they would mobilize and attack, and then they disperse. So we're hopeful that this election, because there will be no much pressure on our security apparatus, so we should be able to get enough perimeter security. Because ideally, when an electorate goes to the polling unit, you're not supposed to see people carrying arms, mm -hmm. so you don't get intimidated. And that's why even the IG of police usually withdraw security aid to governors. So you see, most time you see governors without their security because we don't want armed people around where they're voting, so they don't feel intimidated or harassed. So it's the perimeter security that is really key, so that nobody could regroup, mobilize, and then attack, and then disperse. So, so hopefully we would see that in this election, where there will be more boots on the ground that are armed, and they will be able to help curtail this. And if this happens, then that means we've made significant progress. And to be fair, like I said, in the 2023 election, every polling unit, and security did well, because when you look at it statistically, over 85% positive feedback, you know, on how security fared during that election. Absolutely. So, I mean, just as we wind down, you know, looking, looking at the, the, the electoral acts and how, you know, events uh, pretty much turned out, you know, in court, uh, you know, with all of the legal battles and, and all of that, how much confidence, you know, do you think people would have you know, in the use of technology this time around? I think technology has come to stay, and technology plays a critical role. Look at the experience from 2007, 20, uh, you know, 2011, and even at that time, President, late President Omar Musa Yaradwa, God bless his soul, acknowledged the flaws that brought him into office. So technology, and BVAS is playing a key role here. And I think we need to build on that and then strengthen the legal and regulatory framework. You see, Victor, let's remove emotions from the electoral process, and particularly because a lot of people tried to remove judicial process from the electoral process. No, it's important because, you know, the law provides that if you are grieved, you should approach uh, the judiciary. So let's remove emotions from it. The judiciary, and when you look at the bone of contention, nobody questioned the results of the elections because of technology. A lot of people were hampered on technicalities. And if candidates were actually, uh, you know, if candidates, you know, have the requisite to run for office. So it was mostly fake news propaganda that we were all seeing, you know. And a lot of people were targeting, sadly, were targeting judicial officers. What they would look at is the reality. And everybody, all the party agents had from ECA, you had the result sheet. And ideally, in every polling unit, they signed this result sheet and they also paste it on the wall. Mm. So nobody really, and if you followed it, nobody were questioning the results, but rather they were questioning the candidates if they were actually qualified to run for office. So when you hear all these political parties say they're supposed to be declared winners, well, let's say the truth. You're saying you, you won the elections, but you're not actually questioning the integrity of the result, rather the person mm -hmm. who was your opponent that run. And I always say, let's be fair, if they had declared someone else winner, would you question the process that actually brought you in as a winner? So again, for me as an observer, my role is to uh, watch the process, process and report independently, not to get caught up in the politics, the fake news and propaganda. Well, let's hope that, uh, you know, as we get to these elections, all of these would not be there. I mean, because fake news, propaganda, uh, disinformation, misinformation are things that will get people scared. And, uh, of course, now we don't have voter apathy, but hopefully we don't see all of that, uh, you know, during the elections. And as you go to the field, be safe. Uh, come back in one piece. Inshallah. <laughs> you know, thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I have to say thank you for joining us on My the pleasure, show. My pleasure. Absolutely, and sharing your thoughts. Uh, sadly, we lost Emeka Eze, who was in our studio in Lagos. Uh, but, of course, he was making his points uh, just before we lost him. But that's why we'll have to wrap it up today on the show. Thank you so very much for watching. Have a peaceful elections in Imo, in Kogi, as well as by Elsa State. So I'm Victor Mathias. Bye for now. And as always, we'll leave you with the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. For the proceeds of uh, narcotics and um, money laundry by the District Court of Illinois, I sat down too. I did not hear it. The reaction of the Supreme Court ruling by counsel to Labour Party kicks off this week's most viewed videos. Because the lead judgment was detailed on all other issues. And they said all the issues. When the American dollar as much as sneezes, the Naira goes into a coma. 
Why? Six it is followed by Professor Lumumba claiming that Africans are suffering because they elect the worst to lead. In other countries, we still believe that somebody else's currency is what must define us. Filed by the respondents to challenge uh, some issues, grounds of appeal. We have decided. Third spot is a full video of proceedings and judgment on a particular OB appeals against President Tinubu. The latest senior counsel for the appellants distilled seven issues for determination. All of them, except the. I, I did not pack the body. It's not inside the Ghana mosque, inside the big bag. And I know I did not do anything. I just carried the body like that. And in second is a boyfriend of Justine and Kang saying he didn't dismember her. It's me. It's me. <laughs> I was trying to dispose it because I thought anybody that sees this thing now will not blame it on me. While in first is the arrest of four suspects in relation to the robbery that took place at Utupo by the police.